Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, so today's video is going to be a question and answer about me, but I just wanted to start the vlog off because I've come to a place called Fiwi Place. Um, now it's, I came here the other day and had like the best food. I got Bami. Um, so this place is like a five to ten minutes drive from Jam West. So Jam West is like a like a popular tourist destination um, that people go to to do like ATV riding and also like cable, I think like the the cable thing, I don't I forget what it's called, but um, yeah, I wanted to come here and do like a kind of like mukbang um, slash Q and A type style video. So um, yeah, I'm gonna order my food now. Um, let me let me see. So yeah, last time I came, I had the bemi. It's like fried cassava in like coconut milk or something like that. It was the best thing ever. So yeah, I had it with like rice and peas, um, mixed veggies, and also the pasta salad, which slapped as well. So a girl's gonna be eating today. So get ready. <laughs> so, so that's, that's the way how we bought it. Okay, so that's the cassava. So it, I think it comes in about six in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when we when I look about it to give you, you cut it in four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Then we get the milk, mm -hmm. the coconut milk. Mm -hmm. We put a little sugar in it. Yep. A little salt. Yep. And then you dip the bam in it. You okay. the oil and you put it in it and then fry it. Okay, done. I'll get bami. Do you guys have rice and peas? Yes. Pasta salad? Mm hmm And mixed veg. Do you have any plantain? No, we don't. Okay. We have. Do you eat fish? Not really. You I try. Like I yeah. I try not to eat like meat or fish and stuff like that. But I'll definitely get the rice and peas, of pasta salad. Do you have any like mixed veggies? We have. We have like the raw veg. Raw veg, not mm. like sautéed or anything like no. that. No. Okay. Do you want it to sauté? Could I? If just like a little bit. Is that sure. All right? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll do that. Also, another thing that I'm just kind of like shook, shocked with. Hi. <laughs> it's like there's no tourists here. Like this place is absolutely beautiful, but there's no tourists here. So let me just take you guys around a little bit. Okay, so they have like a super cute like sitting area. You've got your entrance here. Um this is where they you order and cook the food. They do also do like they also do meat here as well. Um, I just don't eat. I try not to eat meat. So it's called Fiwi Place. And then they have like this little cute sitting area here too that you have like umbrellas that you can put up as well. And like toilets over there and like a massive area over here. Like I'm surprised there's not like, you know, tourists here with like kids and their families. Anyway. <laughs> I thought this place was really cool and the food slap so you'll got you'll get to experience it with me. Okay, so I have gotten my food and it looks I mean Okay, so let me explain what I've got. I've got mixed veg mixed veg down the bottom here. This is the bummy, which is like fried cassava. I've got pasta salad and rice and peas, so I'm gonna smash this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to do this video as like a question and answer um, type of video because I know I've, I've, you've been seeing me post, but you probably don't know a lot about me other than that I am from Australia. So I've written a few questions um, down that um, when I posted um, on my YouTube, people wanted to know and I've just added like a few things in here as well that I thought I might like touch on. Um, but let me try this first. I know the pasta salad slaps, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so good. I reckon this is probably like one of the best pasta salads like I've ever had. In my life. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so I'm gonna eat first because I'm a little bit hungry. And then I'll start answering questions. Okay, no, no, no. So, I feel like what um, a lot of people wanna know is like my background or ethnicity. So, yes, I am from Australia. I was born and raised in Australia. Um, but I am mixed. So, my dad is from, my dad is Chinese. He um, migrated to Australia when he was around like 30. Um, and he grew up in Shanghai. And then my mom is half Ukrainian, half Australian with roots that like tie back to Irish because Australia was colonized by um, the British. Yeah, so our roots go back to Irish. Um, so yeah, Chinese, Ukrainian, and then I just say Australian. Um, but yeah, so that's me. I'm 27 years old. Um, a lot of people want to know how I ended up in Jamaica and why Jamaica. So let me explain that. <laughs> it's so good. Thank you so much. It's really good. <laughs> the chef is just saying to save some for him because he's hungry. Uh, it's so good. Okay, so. I'm 27 years old. Grew up in Australia. Um, I did like a, uh, when I was, yeah, came out of high school. I did a bachelor's degree in science and like majored in medicinal chemistry, but I did nothing with it because it wasn't like a passion or anything. It was more so I went to study. Like obviously, you know, I'm super grateful that I got the opportunity to go to university, but it was never really like a passion of mine. It was more so like fulfilling um, probably what my dad wanted out of me. <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, just after that, I picked up like a casual retail job um, and then found myself working in IT recruitment after that, which then led me to the UK. So I'd actually been this time last year, I moved to London and worked there for six months before I went and did like a bit of a Europe trip with my two best friends. And then I decided to, um, once I came back to London, quit my job. And that's when I went to Jamaica for a month. So um, people want to know, want to know why Jamaica. And it actually started like, I think the seed was planted like um, three years ago. So back when I was in Australia, just, you know, casually figuring out what I want to do, what I want to do with my life. Um, cause I had no clue. Um, I remember seeing like a TikTok on, I was on TikTok. I think this was during like lockdown or something like during COVID. Um, I'm going to be after that, but I saw a TikTok and I can't find the TikTok now cause I deleted my TikTok account, but it was of a girl jumping in, I think it's called like Old Spanish Bridge in Ochi. She was, yeah, she was jumping off of that. And like prior to this, I had heard nothing. Like I did not know anything about Jamaica or had heard anything. Um, so yeah, I saw that video. I was like, hey, that looks cool. <laughs> and then like I saved it. Um, and I was just kind of like on her channel cause she was, traveling like a little around Jamaica and also like not gonna lie so she when she like jumped in like the guy that was working like that I saw in the video that was working there like the guy that like um obviously like took her like on the the rope the guy that works at like Spanish Bridge he was kind of cute and I was like okay Jamaica <laughs> I see you um so yeah like it, that was just like the seed that got planted in my head that was like th probably three or four years ago and then um, whilst I was in the London, so last year, probably like, yeah, this time last year, around April last year, I um, got my little heart broken and then um, decided to catch a, yeah, decided to catch a flight. Um, I was just like, okay, you know what? I don't really know anything about Jamaica, but it was just kind of like in the back of my head. Um, so I just 
spontaneously booked a one month in Jamaica. Um, and that was for, that was like, I did that, I think in April last year for September last year. Um, so that's how I ended up in Jamaica. I knew nothing about it. So like when it got closer to September, I started looking at Airbnbs and I found like an Airbnb up in the grill and I had no clue about like any of the parishes or anything like that. Literally knew nothing about Jamaica, but I was like, okay, yeah, like I moved, I moved to London. I, well, you know, why can't I travel to Jamaica by myself? Um, I feel like the thing, the thing is when you like move to one country, like when you move to one country by yourself, you kind of feel like invincible and feel like you can just move anywhere. And like, I very much back myself in terms of um, being able to like have my own back and being able to like, you know, sort things out, like if I need to. And like, I proved that to myself when I moved to London. So yeah. And then, yeah, so I spent a month in um, Jamaica last year. Um, I stayed in an Airbnb with um, a Rasta man. His name was Lyndon. Um, and yeah, it was just a very, very beautiful experience. When I first came here, I was really like timid and had no clue how to move around the island or anything like that. Um, but like slowly I started to work up um, my confidence. So I started to work up my confidence on how to move around the island. I was so sorry if I'm talking with my mouth open. Is this what you do in mukbangs? Like, I don't really know. <laughs> um, but yeah, in that experience of staying with Lyndon for a month, I learned a lot. And, you know, was really grateful for Jamaica, for what I had learned, for, I guess, like, the healing that the land gave me as well. Um, so after I left Jamaica, I went back home to Australia over Christmas. And the plan was to, <laughs> my idiot, <laughs> my idiot ass, brought a um, one way to get back to London because the plan was to go back to London um, for like a boy, um, which is silly. But then when I was in Australia, I got my little heart broken again. And yeah, I had a one way to get back to London. And yeah, the plan was to go back to try and, you know, give this whatever it was a shot, but it didn't work out. So I, which I believe everything happens for a reason because if that had worked out, I wouldn't be here right now. Like I would have just been living my life according to, I guess, someone else. So I am very grateful for that. Um, yes, because I'm a very strong believer that everything does happen for a reason. And if that had not happened, um, I would not have been here right now. So yeah, I think a couple of weeks before my flight um, to London, I just like, my intuition just kind of guided me to book a flight back to Jamaica. And I had always like intended to go back to Jamaica, um, but um, I didn't plan to go back so soon. There was kind of just like a calling that got gradually louder and louder um, until I actually went ahead and booked the ticket. I call that my intuition like this voice in my head that will get louder and stronger until, you know, I do what I need to do. Because I'm very in, in tune with my intuition. All right, so then I booked my ticket and immediately started crying <laughs> because I went through, what it was is that my ego or my 3D body was catching up to what my soul like had wanted to do. Wagwan, well, you're good. Yeah, good, good. So like I booked the flight and then started crying. I was like, oh my God, what, <laughs> what am I doing? It's like my soul already knows that this is the path for me, 
But my ego is just trying to catch up to, you know, what I'm doing. Because so many times, like throughout this journey, I've had like the biggest imposter syndrome um, with like my ego telling me like, who do you think you are to do this? Like, you know, either go home or give up or things like that. So it's, it's kind of something that I do have to um, struggle do have to fight against and tell myself that no like you're here for a purpose um you're here for a reason so yeah um yeah and basically here we are it's been a process of the thoughts kind of or my intuition leading me like prior to this I hated being on camera I hate being in pictures but it's kind of like all of that is in comparison to like the message or what I'm trying to do here is just, you know, insignificant compared to how I think I look on camera or, you know, and it's actually helped me a lot filming, filming this stuff. So, um, but yeah, I received a lot of like, um, concern from my family as you know what I'm trying to do is um, remove the stigmas from this country my family was very concerned um, for me coming back to Jamaica um, and like <laughs> my my dad doesn't even know what I'm doing in Jamaica he just thinks like my dad being Chinese he's very strict wanted me to be a doctor <laughs> Here I am in Jamaica <laughs> um, and like he obviously wants me to like come home, settle down, have a nine to five because that's his his perspective of what, you know, being successful in life is. But that very much does not align with my soul. Um, so my dad just thinks I'm bumming around in Jamaica, which I mean, some people might say that's what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, he has no clue what I'm doing. And if he found out, then dad, if you're watching this. <laughs> Big up yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I received like a lot of like, people thought I was, oh, when I first started, when I first posted my video, my family thought I was, something was wrong with me. Like they thought I was going through something and that I needed to find myself um, but no one really understood like the passion or the drive or the vision that I had until like recently. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's been, it's been a process. So that's that. Um, let me move on to the next question. Let me see what I've got here. So I spoke about my ethnicity, how they end up in Jamaica and what got me interested in Jamaica. Um, what I knew before visiting Jamaica, I knew nothing. Um, for the first time that I came, okay, am I going to be spending a lot of time in Jamaica? Um, and how long do I plan to stay in Jamaica? So what I did was I booked like a one way ticket with like a flexi option to go back home, but I've canceled the return flight. I wanted to do the one way is because the reason why I wanted to do the one way ticket was because I wanted to give myself the option, um, to either, uh, leave earlier if you know I was not feeling the vibes or stay longer if I was because this whole process I've literally just it's not been planned it's just been like I've just been taking it as it comes um so I can stay here for a minimum of three months which I think is what I'm going to plan to do and then ask when it comes to that three months being an Australian citizen I'm allowed to apply for an extension. So I can get up to, like if it's approved, I'm able to get extended for either like three or six months. And I think you just keep having to go through that process after the three months um, is up. So um, I think when I was talking to the lady at uh, the immigration, she said I Australian citizens are potentially allowed to stay for up to 12 months, but obviously it's just up to the discretion of you know, the immigration officers. So that's that. So I'm basically just going to see how it goes. My focus is, you know, Jamaica. 
Um, you okay? Yeah. Thank you. Burgers is Jamaican. And yeah, just gonna see how it goes. Um, in terms of like the filming videos, um, cause like I know a lot of YouTubers come here and they film in Jamaica and they go to like different, different countries. People wanna know like what my plans are, like if I'm gonna keep filming after I leave Jamaica. Um, I don't have a plan, like I, this is probably gonna sound weird, but I literally just uh, go with the flow. Like I don't even know where I am going um, in a couple of days time, like whether I'm gonna stay here or go to a different parish. Like I just, it just literally comes to me. Like it's just like a feeling that comes to me and then I'll either stay or move on, like depending on how I'm feeling. Um, so someone wanted to know what my five year plan for the future was. Um, I cannot tell you that um, cause uh, yeah. But like, I do know that like in my future, I do want to obviously settle down, have a family, have kids. And I do want to raise them like off the land. Um, I do resonate a lot with the Rastafarian lifestyle um, and I do sustainable living is something that I'm very much interested in. So I do see myself like settling down and growing my own food and um, like maybe like homeschooling like my own kids and stuff like that. Uh, very outside of like the matrix or social norms. Um, and where that would be, I don't know. And what that looks like, I'm not too sure whether that's like in Australia, um, in London, in Jamaica, um, in Vanuatu, I really don't know. But I guess it, I feel like I'm a strong believer that whatever's meant to be will be. I feel like the future is already paved for me. It's just... I just have to like listen to my intuition to get there. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the plans for the future, or at least that's what I know I want from the future. Um, but the small little details in between, I'm not able to tell you just yet. So you'll just have to wait and see. Um, okay. I also received a question of, am I still hesitant on going to Kingston? So. Some of you might be confused because I'm back in um, Westmoreland right now, down in Negril. So I did actually go to Kingston and I um, got myself into a little bit of an unfavorable situation um, and that has nothing to do with Jamaica, it has nothing to do with Kingston, but it has everything to do with me misplacing my trust in someone I thought I could trust um, and that's on me because I think I was chasing content and I think I um, forgot the fact that I was looking for someone to be you know the main character or the star or whatever and I feel like I kind of forgot the fact that your girl is the main character <laughs> so I got myself in a bit, a bit of a um, sticky situation and I'm not going to elaborate on it or anything like that um, but just know that you know it is that is not a reflection of Jamaica and so I spent like a few days in downtown Kingston and I did film some like really good content um, and then but it's I think it was good because it gave me like a taster into Kingston and kind of like what I want to do whilst I am in Kingston and what I want to share with the world about Kingston because I think I was just going there for the sake of going to Kingston like oh let me go downtown Kingston just because everyone goes there let me prove something um, and then yeah so I spent a few uh, I, I, I visited like the garrisons um, and then stayed in like uptown Kingston for a little bit. And then I just had to come back to Negril because Negril feels very much like home for me. I just needed to come back and like realign myself and, you know, be around people who I feel safe and comfortable around. So that's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. I've just come back here um, to realign, realign myself. Um, 
and just to like listen to the next the next steps. So I know that I'm really going to like Kingston. So I'm going to um, go back to Kingston and do it and showcase Kingston in a way that I'm I'm happy with and I'm proud of and not just doing it for the sake of doing it, if that makes sense. Can I tell you? Of course, I'm just filming like a question and answer at the moment. Okay. Um, but I will be done in a little bit, but. Okay, so where are you from though? I'm from Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> are you oh, from America? Good. Yes. Yeah. New York. How are you? Know? I can tell by your accent. Oh. Okay. <laughs> First time here in Jamaica? No, second time actually. Oh, wow. Mm hmm. That's nice. Name's Tyrone. You are? Jess. Jess? Nice yeah. to meet you, Jess. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure you didn't want to try my jerk sauce on your brami? Is it from, is it made from meat? No. Yes. No, not really like for meat, but it's like all vegetables blend together. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay, maybe, yeah. Can I try? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll try. Okay. You just, on the barmy, yeah? Yeah, just a little bit. You just try this a little bit. You'll love it, but you know, it seems you like spice, guys. Okay, is it spicy? Uh, yeah. Should I put it here and really, dip it in? Really spicy. All right, jerk sauce. Okay. Um, do you want me to go? Or you want me to just sit with you for a little bit? Because I'm actually furry. Ah, uh, mmm. That's got a kick to it. Yes, <laughs> That's good though. There it is. Thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll finish up this video. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come, like, if you want to... Um, I can even, like, film you a little bit if you want to talk about the place or, like, working here. Or stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. I'll probably be about, like, ten more minutes. Ten more minutes? Yeah? Sure. Like, cool. Thank you. Yeah. What's your um, page? Uh, it's called Bless Up Jess. Can I go? Oh, yeah, of course you can. Sure. It's on YouTube. I just started, so. <laughs> Bless Up Jess. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thank you so Come much on. for the sauce. You're welcome. I'm Thank you. The for a bit All right. Grab Easy. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Chef was talking to me. <laughs> um. So yeah, just realigning myself in the grill because I feel very like at home here and comfortable here. Um, there's a few things that I added to the list that people didn't actually ask, but I just wanted to touch on. And that is um, like, <laughs> I've seen like a few comments on, especially, I don't know if you guys have seen like the short uh, with the, the, je the coconut jelly, the jelly coconut um, man that like ch ch um, charged me like 500, um, for the coconut and like I've seen like people being like oh he's a thief like you know she's getting charged the the tourist price and stuff like that and like the thing with that like is is like I, I don't like in terms of like people getting charged tourist prices and stuff like that or people complaining that they get charged tourist prices it's just the name of the game like that happens literally where like in so many different countries and me like traveling to China like even like with my dad and stuff like that when you go to the markets they'll literally times the price by 10 and you have to barter it down it's just like it's just the like the fun of it or like the name of the game and obviously you have to know how much like things are worth because like if you don't know how much things are actually worth then you can't barter it down and come to like some happy medium um but like I don't get offended by that or take that personally at all um it literally happens everywhere and like I'm kind of like okay you know like good for them like if because some tourists are happy to pay like overpay for things like yeah that's I, I just feel i personally feel like um that's just the name of the game so stop hating on jelly man <laughs> um and then eh? <laughs> be safe okay another thing that's come up just recently from like the video that I just posted is like do I have like a hidden agenda or am I some like plant or spy from like one of these like political parties or something like that and I just find that so funny because one I don't even watch the news in my own country I think the news is bullshit and just like propaganda um and like it literally just scares scares people like I feel like that's why everyone has this misconception of Jamaica being like the most dangerous place ever um, so I don't even watch the news in my own country, let alone this country. Um, 
but it's just things that I noticed, like the issues that I'm touching on are things just I noticed from being here last time or things that I've like, ex like I'm experiencing as I travel here. For instance, um, yesterday I had to go to the doctors and uh, something that I would normally get for free back at home, I had to pay like almost 20,000 Jamaicans all up, which is like 200 Aussie dollars. Um, and I was, t and that was not because I was a tourist, that's just because you have to, you know, obviously you have to pay to get um, medical assistance here. Um, and I was speaking to one of the ladies at, um, at the clinic and she said like, if you don't have money here, you literally die. Like, um, she was talking about like her own personal story as well, but just like talking to her, like, and even when we went to the doctors, some like basic medical things they didn't have, like they were out of stock, um, or they just didn't have supplies for. Um, and me just comparing that to Australia, you know, it made me quite angry. Like these are things, like these are issues that make me angry, like I'm angry for local Jamaicans. Like I'm not here as like some plant or some spy or anything like that. It's just like me wanting to shed light on, you know, the issues that are happening here. Um, Cause I, I then went through like this battle because I see, see some comments of like, oh, she's been in Jamaica for this, that, and you know, tell her to, you know, stop doing what she's doing or she's too political or things like that. But if like things are not brought to light, then how is anything like going to change or how is awareness going to be spread? Um, so, and then I had like this thought of, okay, well, Jess, maybe you need to keep your videos a little bit more just like fun and less, you know, um, but then this is just what my heart, like, this is just what my heart is and like my soul is telling me to do. So I'm sorry. Like, it's just, I can't help myself. I really can't help myself because things make me like upset for local Jamaicans. And you know, I, I can't like, just like post like a fun video and just put like turn a blind eye when I can literally see the issues here. So, like, if people want to say that I'm a plant or some spy for, like, political parties, like, <laughs> I just find it really funny. <gasps> okay. Last thing. That's all I had on my list, actually. So, I'm going to finish eating this food at Feely Place, which is a owned by Jamaicans um, so if any tourists are down near Jam West I'll plug the location in the description box if you have any other questions I'm more than happy to do like a part two of a QA. and a um, I thought about like doing like lives and stuff like that but look I'm really new to this and I don't really know how like this shit really works, to be honest. I'm still kind of working it out. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys feel like you know me a little bit better. Um, I want to do a lot more like food videos as well, um, showcasing like the local, um, local foods here and stuff like that. I don't eat meat or I try my best not to avoid eating meat and fish and things like that. So, sorry if you want to see me eating meat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys feel like you know me a little bit better. And I would love to hear your opinions, I guess, on like what I'm doing in Jamaica or what you want to see out of like my upcoming vlogs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, love, blessings and respect. <laughs> okay so i just wanted to check back in and say that i smashed all of this the proof <laughs> yes sir all right bye for now